Hello and welcome back to another episode of LMS Cast. My name is Chris Badgett and I'm joined by two very special guests from the Lifter LMS team itself. We're joined by Thomas Levy and Allie Mathis. How are you guys doing? Great. Very good. Very good. Awesome. Happy so, to be here again. Excellent. Yeah, Allie is probably our most frequent guest at this point. So she's she's got she's winning there. Um, Thomas hey, is the Thomas is the co-founder of Lifter LMS. He's the head of development. Allie is the director of projects done for you and trial and uh, other amazing things. But in this episode, it's going to be a little different. We're actually going to talk about an experience that we had as a team uh, attending a live event. Uh, we've done episodes here on LMS Cast about the importance of virtual and live events as part of learning or as part of training programs or as part of high ticket programs or course, you know, instructional design, including events. But we're kind of flipping the script and talking about an event that we attended called Cabo Press, which was in Cabo San Lucas in Mexico. Um, it was an event put on by Chris Lemma. Um, you can find more out about Chris at chrislemma.com. He's a speaker in the WordPress community. He writes a lot about uh, agencies, WordPress products, selling, community building. He's an all around great guy and resource for entrepreneurs out there, especially in the WordPress space. So we attended Chris's event. This is actually Thomas and I's third time attending. And uh, it's that good that we have gone back three times. And uh, Ali came down with us this year, which was excellent. But this episode is about highlighting what we got out of Cabo Press. So if you as a course designer or uh, you know, learning experienced designer are thinking about adding an event into the mix, uh, listen to this episode as we share about our experience at Cabo Press and what it was like for us an event designed by Chris Luma. Awesome. <laughs> um, so just to frame in the conversation a little bit, this, this event was at a very nice resort. It was all inclusive. Uh, all the food and drinks were included. Um, all you pretty much had to do was get to Cabo on some planes. Everything else was taken care of. Um, there were other hosts at the event who kind of led conversations and there was uh, ample free time for connections and relationships to form. I think there were approximately somewhere between 50 and 100 people there. Uh, so it was more of an intimate event, not one of the more giant events. Um, sort of a, a hybrid between a small conference and a mastermind. So that's what it was. And just to kick off the conversation, uh, we do have a blog post write up about this, which you can find at blog.lifterlms.com forward slash Cabo Press dash growth. Um, but one of the things that I, I really get out of Cabo Press is the fact that it's more about the conversations than a traditional or typical conference where um, you go and you, you know, there's a speaker or multiple speakers and you sit in chairs and you get the premium content. This event was totally different. It's about conversations around meal tables and with experts in various fields and other people with more or less experience. So I just get so much out of those conversations, which the free time also enables that uh, creates a lot of learning opportunities and relationships. But I'm gonna turn it over to you guys. What do you guys think about that conversational format of Cabo Press? Um, I am extremely distracted by your giant microphone. I <laughs> am not distracted. <laughs> I thought it was great. I, um, I really enjoyed like the dinner conversations and how the groups changed every night. I thought it, it led to a lot of opportunity to have a lot of interesting different conversations that I probably wouldn't have had if I had just sat with you guys at dinner every night. Um, no offense, but um, uh, yeah, it was like a great opportunity to meet a lot of a lot of different people and leaders and influencers in our in our field, and you know, just chat with them about business and just day to day life. What do you think, Thomas? Any good 
conversations or, or, um, you know, how, how did that unfold for you? Uh, oh man, it was, uh, I, I we, we've been a couple of years now and, uh, I, I can trace back now. Um, I actually did some, some, some writing on this the other day, but, um, if I, if I look back now over the past three years of our, our company, um, we've been transitioning from, you know, the agency, which I'm, I'm sure a lot of listeners have been kind of following our journey as a company, but uh, transitioning from an agency to a primarily product focused company. Uh, and, and some of the kind of stair steps that we've gone through as a company can be pinpointed for, for me to conversations and uh, things that we've uh, learned by attending this event. Um, and, uh, you know, hi hindsight there's always 2020 and you can, uh, you can kind of like connect the dots a lot better when you're looking back on something. Um, and, and, you know, maybe there's some amount of confirmation bias where I'm trying to connect dots to Cabo press. Um, but, uh, it all kind of stems around for, for me, like just some of these conversations and I've been to a lot of conferences. I've been to really big conferences and really tiny conferences. I go to a lot of word camps and, um, and, and, and this, this, this event for me is, is, I don't know. It, it holds a very special place in my heart because, uh, you the opportunity here to like sit at a table with um, some really really smart people uh, and very casually discuss some of your biggest problems as a as an entrepreneur as a business owner as a um, as a person in this kind of weird WordPress technology space um, and uh, I, I think kind of the the candid like the the opportunity where it's it's very I guess vulnerable like a mastermind um, has led for me to to kind of just discover things about myself through these, these intermittent conversations that I, I, I'm not sure I would have discovered otherwise. So, uh, I, I don't know, man, it's just, it, for, for me, it's, it's really, really enjoyable. And I, and I haven't really figured out, um, we're, we're a couple of weeks out from, from, uh, now our third Cabo press and, um, and, uh, I haven't really figured out exactly like what happened, <laughs> what happened there. That's one of the reasons I, I think we wanted to sit down <laughs> and talk about this is, um, but, but if I look back on some of the previous years, um, there's some really, really big things that, you know, we, we, we were there and we're like, okay, now that we're, we're out through this and out of this, here's what we're going to do over the next six months or a year. Um, and I think we've been able to realize a lot of those things. So I'm, I'm really excited for, for this next kind of six or eight months as we kind of get to implement the things that we've discovered and learned and, and, and thought about, uh, at Cabo Press this year. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just a, a great event. I'm, I'm really, really glad to have participated in as many years as we have. Another point to those many years and um, tracing decisions back, <clears throat> um, I've, I've realized that based on some of the conversations there, things learned, uh, things that we brainstormed and came up with while decompressing, um, there's this thing called the law of compounding where the longer we survive as a business and grow and evolve, just the very act of survival and staying with it, staying in the game, continuously innovating, challenging assumptions, that momentum starts to compound on itself and you know things that you know helped us get a little step forward now are turning into much bigger results you know projected many years out uh, or relationships that you know people we've met that now we've seen in multiple places develop friendships with business relationships with those things start compounding on on each other it's not necessarily just like slow and steady linear growth some some things um you know grow exponentially out of Cabo press that's just one thing i've noticed yeah i i, I can agree i think there's like um a, a leveling up of sorts and I, I think that's probably with anything but um you know we can we can kind of look at the the compounding effects of Cabo press and uh you know, but in, in, in retrospect, where, where I am kind of personally, where we are as a, as a business and a company um, is a very different place this year than it was uh, two or three years ago. Um, and and that's, that's kind of, I think, an interesting about Cabo Press, too, is there's an intermingling of product-oriented and service-oriented companies. Um, and, and I look, when we, when we first, first went, we were primarily service-based and just doing custom websites and large custom projects and things like that. Uh, and... Uh, uh, I, and I think, you know, one, one of the things was over, over the years, we, we have always kind of wanted to move towards focusing on Lifter LMS full time. Um, but we met a lot of people there that were either in transition or already through that transition. Um, 
and uh, and then over the years kind of level up and, and and build on what we've learned in the transition and now being through the transition get to sh kind of share or mostly through the transition kind of share our experiences and things like that but yeah tangentially related to what you just said I think well I mean I think it was after you guys came back from Cabo Press last year really that we really started making the shift toward like the big shift towards becoming a product-based company yeah, you guys yeah. came back with with you know like a lot of really strong ideas and and plans for that. I remember. Yeah, and those those strong ideas and plans. Um, I'm gonna go to one of my other points, which is well, I call it the new context effect. So it's like okay, we're gonna just totally pull out of our ordinary life, our ordinary locations, our ordinary surroundings, you know, family relationships, whatever. We're going to go to this thing for five days. You know, we're going to get on a plane. We're going to go to another country. We're going to hang out with people. And it's like a completely new context, which is almost like giving yourself permission to have this space. Like when I think about Cabo Press, I think about it's really important to get the most out of the event to make the space, to make sure the business is stable. You know, things are, that need to be handled while it's happening are going to get handled. And I can really, really be present, but also just take advantage of that new context. And like you said, from your perspective, Allie, when you came back, there was like, all right, there's some, that was then, this is now some decisive changes have been made and that new context right. or just break from the day to day is often where helpful for innovation. And, uh, yeah. I, you know, on, on that point, I've been to so many conferences where I just pop my laptop open and continue in the day to day. Um, you know, while somebody's up on stage, like delivering really, really valuable information, but I'm not gathering any of that or, or processing any of that because I'm reading emails and things like that. Um, and, and I think, you know, one of the things that's, that's really special about Cabo is that um, for, for anyone who doesn't know, most of the actual content, the sessions, take place in pools and you can't really bring a laptop into a pool. Um, so I, and I have actually heard some criticism about that where people are like, oh, well, how am I supposed to take notes if it's in a pool and things like that? Um, so, I mean, you could have, of course, some people bring their phones into the water and stuff like that with their little waterproof cases. But for me, uh, an individual who is very, very prone to distraction, that's one of the really, really special things about it is that I, I actually need to go out of my way to distract myself at Cabo Press. Um, and maybe coupled with some laziness, uh, it's like, oh, it'll just be easier just to sit in the pool without a phone than to worry about like destroying my phone the whole time. Although they do have like waterproof phones and stuff like that and whatnot. But uh, anyway, so it's kind of that, that forced uh, bringing you out of the context of the day to day um, is really, really helpful for me as somebody who's, who's kind of prone to that distraction. So I, I really, really love that about the event. And I, I also think it, it, it also since um, most people actually are really, really present in these small group discussions. Um, and, uh, and that actually, I think, makes for more value uh, because it's not just one person saying, hey, this is what you need to do to do X, Y, and Z. It's a, it's a, it's a group of uh, like a 15 to 20 really intelligent people having a, a discussion around that. And uh, like Chris said at the beginning, you know, somebody's leading that discussion or that, that topic, but um, everybody's really participating. And I find there's like just a tremendous level of engagement on all these topics. And um, that, that's something that you don't get to experience at, a, at the average conference where it's one guy on stage. You know, maybe there's a Q&A session or something like that or a breakout session. Um, but, but this is like just nonstop the whole time is like that. So. Yeah, it's not like a traditional lecture where you're being talked at, but you're really part of the whole experience and process. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I would never bring my phone in the water anyway, even with a waterproof case. Yeah, just throwing that out there, yeah. <laughs> just putting it out there. <laughs> I think that's an important point. Like, it is important to what we've done in the past is we'll make sure we take some time individually or together to decompress while we're still there and, like, capture some ideas and some notes uh, just so that, you know, you, it's important to capture that while you're in that you're in that separation in this different world that you can, um, you know, capture the insights for action later. Uh, that's an important thing to just kind of plan on. Yeah, and I do remember, I think it was Aaron Flynn had that little actual waterproof pad of paper that you could write on in the pool too. Oh, I didn't see that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was cool. That is possible. Um, yeah. <laughs> another one for me is, I call it a plus equals minus. Like this is less of a, you know, go hear some gurus talk and it's more like, let's have some really awesome 
uh, conversations facilitated by some great leaders, but also a lot of the insight comes from each other. And I call this plus equals minus. Now it depends what you're talking about, but um, plus is something where um, you know you have you're learning from somebody with more experience on whatever the topic is. Equals is kind of somebody on the same level. Minus is you might be talking to somebody who has less experience than you. And, but you know, with the same two people, that might be different. The, it might be different based on the topic. But those different levels of experience on whatever the topic is are extremely valuable, no matter which level you're at. And that's one of the things I love about Cabo Press is it's um, it, there is that you know kind of tribe of different uh, people with different levels of experience, but all kind of caring about the same mission and trying to you know build businesses and, and it is a business conference and figure out how to make all this stuff work. Just those varying levels of experience is just, uh, I get a ton of value out of that as well. Um, cool. The other thing I just wanted to highlight was um, there's a great book about um, software design, user experience design called Don't Make Me Think. Um, and that's one of the things I love about Cabo Press, which is you show up, you don't have to think about anything, like in terms of like basic needs, it's all taken care of. I mean, it's somebody's going to be there at the airport to get you the, uh, the rooms there. It's going to be clean every day. There's food, great, wonderful, amazing food. Um, you know, everything's kind of organized. So all the time that you do have is maximized. And that's really special because if you go to like, you get on a plane, you go to a normal conference, you got to figure out your Airbnb, your hotel, uh, where we're going to eat tonight. You know, there's a lot of other like decisions that go into to it, even if you are kind of removed. Um, but that's that's one of the things that I just find so efficient and awesome about Cabo Press is it's, it really makes the space just in how Chris Lemma has designed the event itself that you don't really have to think about the trivial things. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice part. Yeah, and you, you, the the other part, uh, maybe tangentially related to that, is that uh, it it is kind of a a, cl a very closed environment in that um, everything takes place in a relatively small area at a resort. Right, you could you could walk to any any part of that resort. Although there are some hills and the stair stairways get a little confusing, you can very easily get lost at that resort. But that's not yeah. a. Yeah. I don't think that's Chris Lemma's fault. I think that's from the experience. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, for, for, for me, this is sometimes more of an introvert. Um, it, it makes it a lot easier to participate in more of the kind of the uh, extracurricular activities that, that, that go on um, at conferences. Whereas in, instead of trying to figure out, oh, who's going to what bar and, you know, where are we going to get dinner and who are we going to eat with tonight? It just kind of, uh, you can just kind of wander through the hotel lobby and figure out what, what is going on and you will be included. Uh, you know, kind of regardless of what your attitude is, um, unless of course you're like, I'm just going to go post up in my hotel room and hide, uh, which you, you, I don't know why you would course, do that you know, though. Yeah. <laughs> so it so reminded I, me a little bit of like college freshman orientation week where, I mean, I know you guys have been there, you know, this was your third year, but for me, I was meeting a lot of new people for the first time in a, in a new environment, like you said, but it was like a little bit of a closed in environment and you know, there were but your group of people was, you were surrounded by them and, and could talk to different people. And, you know, it was a really neat experience. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I like the way he kind of um, facilitates the, uh, the, in, in, I, he, he, he'd put you in different groups all the time. So you may have one, we had like one static lunch group and you could do whatever you want for breakfast, but for dinner every night you were broken into different groups based on different criteria that Chris, um, I'm sure planned out in advance, but they kind of seemed arbitrary uh, at the time uh, or random at the time. So, so you were constantly being uh, kind of like forced into situations with new people, which, you know, is part of the point of an, a thing like this is let's go meet new people. Um, and for me, that makes it a little bit easier, you know, to get to know different people rather than just kind of clicking up and staying with my same group all the time in my comfort zone. So, yeah, it's definitely, it was outside of my comfort zone, but in a good way. Yeah. 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 I think, I think there's a name for that. It's called facilitated networking. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> but, um, one of the, the other great benefits that, um, that I wanted to throw out there is just that uh, it's about making remote work. Uh, we're a remote team at Lyft LMS. 
Again, you're talking to Chris, Thomas, and Allie. We don't work in the same places. We don't live in the same states. Um, and Thomas and I have gotten together many times over the years, but not not very often. And uh, we had never actually met Allie in, in the face-to-face -face before. So what better way to, to do that? And <laughs> I just think that um, if you are listening to this and you work online and you have a team that's you know bigger than you or someone else in your household working together, it is important to get together in person sometimes. Um, it's just part of relationships and if you can pull it off, um, it's just an important thing. And, and I mean, we just, Cabo Press is a great way for us to do that. So that's just another benefit that comes with it. Um, you know, when you work behind a computer remotely, uh, getting together is just an important piece and why not do it in style like Cabo Press? Yeah, 100%. Why not do it in Cabo? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's kind of... Better than doing it in Pittsburgh. <laughs> I don't... I don't... I, I'll, I'll take your word for that. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to uh, thank... If, uh, Chris, if you're listening to this, thank you for uh, organizing the event. It's always been great. It's a highlight of the years for us, and we've just gotten so much out of it. We appreciate it. Um, and also anybody else who uh, attended Cabo Press or was one of the hosts, it's always uh, great. I appreciate everything that you do. Many of, some of those people have been on this podcast, which is great. And um, yeah, I've just gotten so much out of the event. If you're watching this or listening to this and you're thinking about going, um, I highly recommend it. And uh, yeah, it's just, you know, nothing but thumbs up, five stars coming from me. Do you guys have any parting thoughts? No, I, I agree with you 100%. I appreciate, um, I appreciate, you know, the conference and the opportunity to go to the conference. And I think it was good for our, for our team and for our company. So absolutely second what you just said. I would add a third. I, I'd also note too, though, um, this isn't the only event in the WordPress space that happens every year. Um, and, uh, there, you know, it's, it's one of the more expensive events, I would say. Uh, and I, I don't mean that as a bad thing because it's, it's worth every penny. But uh, if, if you're out there and you're listening to this and you're like, oh, that sounds really great, but I just can't afford that. Um, I would recommend looking up some WordCamps because there's a WordCamp uh, two or three every weekend all around the country. And uh, you, you, can, uh, you can get a lot out of them. Um, they, you know, I like WordCamps. They're great. They're not as good as Cabo Press, but uh, they're a great event to get to know members of the community. And a lot of the people you meet um, at WordCamps uh, are people you're going to meet as hosts at, at events like Cabo Press. So the, the, some of the same people are going to be there, um, you know, location-based, something, something along those lines. Like you might not see everybody at every WordCamp. But uh, anyway, so WordCamps are extraordinarily cheap. Um, so I, I highly recommend them. And I, I go out and check a couple WordCamps out if you're looking to go to an event and you can't afford Cabo Press. Or you're not sure you want to go to an event like Cabo Press, if WordCamp is a is a nice nice place to start for potentially. Awesome. Well, Thomas and Allie, thank you for coming on LMS Cast. As you know, here at Lifter LMS, we're big into social learning. We talk a lot about mapping learning from the real world or offline world into the online space. As you can see from this conversation, when we go as a team and hang out with other people doing similar things a lot of learning happens for us it's this kind of experience that inspires the uh the vision of for example social learning the lift lms add-on um so i just want to emphasize how important learning in groups is and and uh what that's all about and again thank you chris for putting on cabo press and thank you all for listening <laughs>